Hello, and welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. In case you have any questions regarding this program, please write us at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Thank you, and enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. We are here once again with Dr. Sarah Figueredo. How are you doing, doctor? Very good, Luis. Thank you so much. Always happy to be here with you. Same here, doctor. So we are going to talk about heart disease today. Is that correct, doctor? That's right. Yes, stem cells for heart disease. That's such a vital organ, <laughs> the heart. We cannot live without it. How do stem cells play a role in heart disease, doctor? Well, we, we have to remember that the heart is a muscle. It's a working muscle. It's an involuntary muscle. We don't think about the beating of the heart. Uh, however, it is a muscle. And just like any muscle of our body, our biceps, our quadriceps, hamstrings, we have to keep it healthy by cardiovascular exercise, um, where uh, we're increasing the heart rate in order to build up the heart muscle. Now, the muscle, if we don't use it is with the heart, if we don't exercise enough, it will shrink, uh, like it, just like any other muscle. And it contains a lot of blood vessels. So those blood vessels are so important in getting oxygen and, uh, and all the nutrients to the, the tissue itself, uh, along with getting it to the rest of the body because it's the heart that beats in order to get all of the blood uh, to the rest of the body. So what stem cells can do in, in this picture is that when there is sort of a weakness or an atrophy, we say uh, a, a muscle atrophy uh, or a weakness, or if there's been a heart attack where uh, part of the heart muscle has been deprived of blood and oxygen, that tissue dies. And so what stem cells can do is they can go in there through the blood and uh, regenerate those, those damaged tissues, as well as regenerate the blood vessels that have been cut off or, or um, destroyed in some way. So stem cells are very, very, uh, an amazing tool in regenerating uh, that damaged uh, heart muscle as well as the blood vessels that have been affected. What does the complete treatment of stem cells involve? Yes, so we will incorporate our total comprehensive uh, complementary therapies with the stem cell treatment itself in order to create the best environment and the best internal milieu of the body to not only create the stem cells, but also to receive the stem cells. So we start with a total detox program uh, that involves a nutritional IV, key nutrients and antioxidants and B vitamins, uh, as well as a, a four nights of a suppository to, again, it's just helping the portal, uh, the liver circulation in order to, to detox and, uh, and then B vitamin shots. So we start with that. We will also follow up with age-appropriate growth hormone therapy, which is so important, again, in sort of revitalizing the body, especially as we age. Every decade of our life after the age of 30, we reduce our growth hormone by almost 20%, 18 to 20%. So we will replenish the body a little bit with growth hormone. We will use oxygen therapy in the form of exercise with oxygen therapy or hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, in this case, the exercise with oxygen would be ideal because we get cardiovascular activity as well as the benefits of the oxygen. And I bet it will, be, it will be like a mild uh, treatment, right? Because of the heart yeah. issues. Yes. Oh, yes. And, and the bike, you know, the exercise with oxygen therapy, it is a very moderate uh, pace. So it's a, it's only a moderate pace in order to get the heart pumping, to get the oxygen and the blood um, pushing that oxygen into the tissues. That's basically the hyperbaric part of it. So it's, it is very comparable to hyperbaric uh, uh, oxygen therapy. And then um, finally, we will also combine a stem cell enhancement formula, a personalized 
stem cell enhancement formula with key herbs and minerals to fortify the body as well as keep the stem cells sort of nudging them to keep doing their work. And, um, and then we, we also round this out with psychological and emotional counseling, which is so important with, you know, chronically ill patients or if someone has recently suffered a heart attack and the, the fear and everything that has been instilled. So we do also some emotional and, and psychological counseling, best possible environment for, for healing. And I, I do have a couple more questions. Um, what type of stem cells do you use for this treatment, doctor? I think yes, um, it's important that the, um, the patients or the future patients know what type of, of stem cells are used. We, we offer a variety of stem cells. Um, our preference is bone marrow derived stem cells because we have a proprietary um, method of growing the stem cells in vivo, which means that they're incubating inside the, the patient's own body. So we have fresh, brand new, uh, young, non-toxic stem cells. Um, and we have the numbers because they're being incubated in the body prior to treatment. Um, and it's a phenomenal way to get the numbers, which is which are so important and viable numbers, which means that they're alive and well, and we have the treatment uh, with bone marrow. We can also offer it with umbilical cord, adipose derived, uh, as well as endo endometrial stem cells. So that's what we will use. Sometimes we'll use a combination of, of stem cells also, depending on on what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, and so the audience know that we don't use what type of stem cells? Oh, we don't use um, fetal or embryonic cells or uh, any other foreign type of a cell we don't use. So everything is uh, either autologous or allogenic mesenchymal, mesenchymal stem cell. Excellent. And the other question is, if a patient already has like a peacemaker, uh, do you recommend the stem cells? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. So the stem cells will not affect the pacemaker at all. In fact, uh, um, it can help with the beating of the heart. So the pacemaker is, is exactly how it sounds. It sort of sets the pace for the beating of the heart when there's an irregular heartbeat or atrial fibrillation or arrhythmias and whatever the case may be. And um, so the stem cells can help actually help go into the heart and sort of help self-regulate the heart um, along with all the other organs and tissues of the body where, because we're applying the stem cells IV, but we first ensure that they're getting to the heart first. Um, and so that's, uh, yeah, that's the approach that we take. And what will be the test that the patient will have to get done before they come to Guatemala to get the treatment? Mm. Yes, very good. So we, we do a, a a screening. Uh, we have a screening process where we'll get a, a good medical history. And then we have a, a series of blood tests, which are most of them are pretty standard, but we will look at some other uh, markers and other um, a handful of other tests that aren't really standard. And once everything checks out, they are, uh, they're a good candidate, they will be approved for treatment, and then uh, we can proceed. And this treatment um, you do in Guatemala, right? And but it is important to let the patients know that this is one-time treatment, or does it require another visit? Louise, thank you for asking that because a lot of patients ask me that question. You know, our goal with the number of stem cells that we use, our goal is that one stem cell treatment will be enough. In time, um, it could be three months, six months. Uh, down the road where we see the results and we're happy with the results. We use high numbers, high quality, uh, a very cutting edge approach by co uh, using complementary adjunctive therapies uh, in order to get the best possible results. So our goal is to not have you come back. Um, and however, if we do, you know, if a, a lot of patients only come back because they see a great change and they want more and that might be after a year or two and uh, and then when we assess each case individually i see in case you are gonna come to Guatemala to get this treatment from dr sarah figueroa in the stem cell healing institute 
I would like you to know that we can arrange everything from the lodging. Also, we provide an Airbnb type of um, apartment. Is that correct, doctor? That's right. Yes. So we will uh, provide accommodations as well as a personal driver, um, all of the treatment that we spoke of. And, uh, and then we can also help make arrangements for day trips uh, to Antigua to see volcanoes and coffee farms. And it's quite a beautiful country to explore. So is there anything else you would like to add, doctor, to this podcast? Uh, no, I think we've covered a lot of ground today, Luis. Thank okay. you so much. By the end of the podcast, you will find all the information how to contact Dr. Figueredo and you may send us an email and she will be more than happy to answer it. Doctor, it was nice talking to you again and don't miss our next podcast, which is going to be about kidney disease. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you, Luis. Okay. Looking forward to it. You take care, doctor. See you next week. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you want to contact us at the Stem Cell Healing Institute or Dr. Sarah Figueredo, you may do it by calling us. In North America, you may dial plus one two zero nine six nine zero seven eight three six. Also, if you want to write us by WhatsApp, you may add plus five zero two four two two zero seven two nine seven. Please send us an email at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. And don't forget to visit our website, stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Also, if you'd like to recommend our treatments, you may find us on Facebook at Stem Cell Healing Institute. Please follow us on Instagram at Stem Cell HI. If you want to recommend this podcast, please refer to anchor.fm slash stem cell healing. Also, you may find us with that very same name on Spotify. If you want to watch our videos, please go to Dr. Sarah Figueredo, that is on YouTube. Thank you.